So what I want to do in this video is to uh, start the schematic introduction to Marx's political ecology, as I call it. And uh, what it, it's, a, it's a simplified uh, presentation of the content of Marx's Capital, Volume 1. Um, I think it's fairly easy to understand uh, the way that I present it, and I think it's pretty accurate. Uh, uh, so uh, it's a very good way to to uh, learn about Marxism because, you know, notoriously people try and fail to read <laughs> Capital. It's a pretty dense book. Uh, but So I've tried to make it more digestible, but uh, using some visuals that I think um, get the key points across. Okay, so here is my slide presentation. All right. And uh, political ecology, I put that in quotes because it's a play on political economy. And um, as I think I've said before, but uh, let me just reiterate, uh, in all of the English speaking world, except for in the United States, um, they speak of political economy. And then in the United States, we just talk about e economics. Uh, but economics is known everywhere, everywhere else that English speakers exist. It's known as political economy, indicating that um, politics and, and economics are not separate fields. You know, this is all one thing. Um, OK, so. So especially political philosophy and economics are, are very closely tied. All right, so now I, I want to work in this this uh, ecological perspective. Um, and so one thing that's sort of a key idea in in Marxism is that there's substructure versus superstructure. So um, so uh, like with uh, Hegel, Marx was very influenced by Hegel. Uh, who was a philosopher at the beginning of the 19th century, and then Marx wrote decades after Hegel. Um, but Marx was heavily influenced by Hegel, and for Hegel, uh, the usual interpretation of Hegel is that he believed that ideas drove history, and so culture uh, sort of comes first, and then history and the concrete circumstances and concrete forms of society that actually exist um, are driven by uh, cultural ideas. And Marx flips that on its head. Uh, now, I, I, I should say that I, I don't interpret Hegel uh, in that way. And um, I will discuss Hegel in another video. because. Um, is important, especially as we get to Dussel, to think about um, the tradition of modern philosophy, which kind of culminates with Hegel. Like he's like the last modernist uh, philosopher, and then um, uh, and and normally understood as a romantic uh, philosopher, uh, but he is in the modernist tradition, but. Um, but he's he's like a turning point in in philosophy, and um, and then with Dussel, which we're going to get to in the last three weeks of class, he wants to reinvent uh, philosophy um, from a non-modernist perspective of Latin America. Okay, and so people often interpret Hegel to be saying that ideas drive history and. Marx flips that on its head and says, no, history drives ideas. And um, even uh, culture uh, and social arrangements are built upon a substructure of production, of act people actually doing things in the world historically. And then any sort of cultural ideas, art, literature, philosophy, religion, those things are sort of riding on top of this base of, of production and people surviving and, and keeping 
their families alive and all that kind of stuff. Um, and species being, I, I'll talk a little bit uh, about species being uh, later on in these presentations on the schematic introduction to Marxist political ecology. Um, species being is going to be a very important concept. Um, and species being is the in the natural inclination of human beings to transform the world. Um, and Marx focuses on species being as you know, human beings natural need to to labor uh, in the world to to use their labor uh, to to change the world. Um, And, and largely that, that historically that has come out in the form of agricultural production, but with the capitalist, the rise of capitalism and its, um, its expression as the industrial revolution, production changes quite dramatically from anything that had been seen in, in the history of the world up to that point. Um, and so, and so you have human beings that like to transform the world and, and in, in capitalism with the industrial revolution, that, that modification of the world, uh, becomes rather extreme. So extreme to the point that we've changed the climate, right? <laughs> so, um, so that we're changing the ecology, we're, we're killing off, you know, thousands, millions of species of animals. It's, uh, we're in a, a, a phase of, a geological phase of, of mass extinction, so that the geological record is going to show that species just went extinct all of a sudden, um, uh, beginning with the rise of capitalism. And, um, and now we're heading to a point where even the human species uh, you know, we're likely to see a, a dramatic drop in population worldwide of humans uh, in the coming decades. And, um, and that's going to show in the geological record, and um, that's going to be a great historical shift. Uh, this all points to, in terms of this substructure of production versus superstructure of culture, um, this all points to a, a more fundamental substructure below um, production and production, you know, human beings modifying the world depends upon the ecology uh, and the ecology is just the, the biosphere. Uh, and when I say ecology, I mean human ecology, the ecology that allows humans to survive on the earth. Um, that is the really fundamental su substructure, the foundation on which everything is built. And, and of course, we're undermining that foundation um, as we speak. Um, and the species being of Homo sapiens is, is unique. You know, we don't see other animals transforming their own uh, ecology to the extent that humans do. Uh, that's a rather unique feature of Homo sapiens, of human beings. And of course, if you change your ecology, you may undermine the very possibility of your existence. Okay, so this is how this ecological aspect fits into Marxism. You know, I, I'm just sort of sketching out uh, a way of bringing ecology to Marxism. And um, I haven't done it really satisfactorily, but this is what I'm thinking. Okay. Okay, so this um, this uh, presentation here um, is a, 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 a in this section I just want to give a foundational perspective and I want to see I want you to see how these schematics uh, and you know they're rather complicated uh, the final schematic is rather complicated and some of the middle schematics that I'm going to show you in a minute are pretty complicated but they all are based on a relatively 
simple schematic and and that's the foundation and that foundation is in species being okay so uh, this is bourgeois production so i use bourgeois to mean capitalist production so this is the capitalist uh, production uh, form and um, i'll explain why i use that word bourgeois as we get deeper into the presentations uh, burger production is the phase before bourgeois full capitalist production burger production is is a a step backwards in the history of of europe you know we are thinking europe and burger here doesn't mean like a, a production of hamburgers uh, but a burger uh, berg in german means town and so this is uh, town-based production and I'm thinking of early towns where moved in Europe when villages originally uh, providing like a, a social center for serfs doing agricultural work those villages some of them especially as land enclosures uh, began happening populations began to come into to villages and then those became towns and there were even towns that were uh, entirely independent of any feudal lord that sprung up and um and 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 so there became this growth of towns in the late medieval period as feudalism is falling apart and a, a totally different style uh, lifestyle developed in those towns that was different from feudalism and largely is based on a craft manufacturer so you have uh, master craftsmen uh, producing things like swords or pottery or uh, carvings or even um, working on cathedrals doing the masonry and sculptures and all that kind of stuff. That's all burger production and I'll have more to say about that, but that's before capitalism. So yeah, bourgeois uh, was more uh, is what we do today. Um, now burger production is an earlier phase. And earlier than that is agrar agrarian production, um, and this is feudalism. And um, and I'll explain what this whole schematic means. But before and, and but before that, we have primitive production, and this is kind of a thing that um, Marx made up as a thought experiment. You know, he, he supposes that that there's this primitive uh, sort of form of production. And it makes logical sense, uh, but he didn't really have hard evidence for this, but, but uh, in the subsequent uh, century and a half since Marx was writing, uh, this has been substantiated. And there's even uh, primitive production going on today in parts of Papua New Guinea. Um, and so this can be observed and it's, and it's very, um, consistent you know and and my notion of it is informed by this by this uh, historically accurate accurate picture um, okay and then before that we have what marx calls species being which is just basic survival off the land and um and this is before primitive production and it is now we're thinking in terms of like hunter gatherers so we're going farther and farther back in time so like from about um from about uh, uh 70 000 years ago so about 70 maybe eighty thousand years ago human beings sort of exploded homo sapiens exploded and, and moved all around the world so the population grew and they became much more mobile and uh, this is called the great leap forward by by some anthropologist um, and a, a style of life de developed around this which we call hunter hunter gatherer societies and so that's what species being is is like at that level of of uh human history and then you know this hunter-gathered lifestyle lasted from about seventy thousand years ago 
all the way up until about 10,000 years ago. And then 10,000 years ago, uh, things changed. For one, the climate became stable uh, into what we call the Holocene, and that's what we're living in right now. And the Holocene is, has been, for 10,000 years, a very stable climate in which agriculture is possible. And so then you get primitive production. Uh, and of course, with the ecological cataclysm that we're brewing right now, um, we're moving out of the Holocene. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's problematic, but uh, I'll have more to say about that at the end of these presentations. Okay. <clears throat> And so species being is the foundation. Okay. Uh, and this is just living off of the ecology, the way it was before the Holocene. So this is really um, dealing with the ecological issues. And I should say, you know, uh, 70,000 years ago was uh, when, uh, you know, we're still in the ice age, uh, like the, it's not really an ice age. Um, it's an interglacial period, but it's what's commonly called the ice age where humans were like hunting woolly mammoth, uh, and, and we're dealing with saber toothed tigers. And there was a lot of snow coverage and a lot of ice. So it was a, it was a, a, a pretty uh, brutal existence and, and not very conducive to agriculture, but hunter-gatherer, uh, you know, work totally was totally feasible. And then uh, about 20,000 years ago, the ice, uh, the ice and glaciers began to retreat, the earth warmed up. And then about 10,000 years ago, that warming stabilized and we still have the ice caps at, at the North and South Pole. Um, and and then we've just remained in this nice climate that's very conducive to agriculture. And again, we're moving out of that right now. So we're, what happens next, we'll see. Okay, and then from that, uh, from species being, we get primitive production. And then after that, we get agrarian production. Uh, this is 10,000 years ago. And then burger production is, is about uh, in the, uh, the 16th century and the 1500s, maybe a little earlier of that, going all the way back to maybe 1300. And then bourgeois production, which is capitalism. And the big, the big um, starting point for this in Europe is the French Revolution in 1789. That's when uh, bourgeois production really takes off. In England, it had already been taking hold in the decades right before that. But um, but with the capitalist revolution in France, um, the uh, industrial production began to to take place all over Europe. And this is what we live in right now. OK, so species being um, I will discuss uh, first uh, and I'll do that in a separate video. So I'm going to end the video uh, for this little introductory part uh, right here, and I'll see you in the next video.